This is an APMT question in 2003. The question is like this. A monkey of mass 20 kg is holding a vertical rope. A rope will not break when the mass of 25 kg is suspended from it. But it will break if the mass exceeds 25. What is the maximum acceleration with which monkey can climb up? G is 10, right? Let's try to understand what's the meaning of this question is, right? There is a rigid support to which a rope is suspended. On this rope, there is a monkey whose mass is 20 kilogram is trying to climb up. With what acceleration it can climb is the question. As this is a weight suspending, on this rope, attention will be generated, which is always acting towards the point of suspension. Now, if you consider the monkey moving upward, I can write an equation of motion. Equation of motion for monkey. The weight of the monkey will be obviously acting in downward direction. As the movement is upward, Force in upward direction shall be treated like positive. Force against the motion shall be treated like negative equal to MA. What is this T? It is being said that maximum of this tension is 25. If I want this acceleration to be maximum, this tension also has to be maximum. What is that maximum tension it can bear, that rope can bear is 25 kgs of its weight. So tension is 25 kilograms, that means respective force is 25 g. Minus mg, m is the mass of the monkey, 20 into g. Equal to 20 into acceleration maximum. So, 5 g equal to 20 into maximum acceleration upward. So, a maximum equal to 5 g by 20. It is given that g is 10, that is 50 by 20 that is 5 by 2, that is 2.5 meter per second square. So the monkey can go up with an acceleration of 2.5 meter per second square. If, he, if monkey try to move more than that, then the tension will increase and the rope will break. So there is no movement of monkey possible. That's how we have to solve the problem. It's a very simple problem, which will tell you how to write an equation of motion. The most important thing of way of writing equation of motion is we shall consider the forces acting in the direction of motion as positive, forces acting against the motion as negative, gives a resultant force. Once if you know that, you can simply substitute and get the answer. That's how we have to solve this problem. Thank you for watching.